Tony, thank you so much for joining us today. Today I'm going to be taking you through the program called ImageJ and teaching you how to use that program in order to measure corals on a nursery or other types of restoration situations. And so this is a way that we can track and monitor coral growth rates utilizing photographic survey data. So the first thing that we need to do is download the program. So what we're going to do is go in to Google and go to ImageJ and we're going to do the Fiji edition. So the one that you want to download from is this one right here, Fiji.sc. So you can go ahead and download for your device and what you're going to get is a zip file. So go ahead and save that zip file to your computer. And I've already done that. So I'm going to cancel out of this right now. But what you'll get is a zip file on your folder. And then when you open that up, it, you don't actually have to install it. The program will run right out of it. So I'm going to navigate to mine now. So I have the folder here, Fiji app. This has been extracted already. So I go in here and I can just start it up right from here with the ImageJ Windows 64 application. All right, so, so once, once you open up ImageJ, all, all you're going to get is this little toolbar here. here. So, so it, it's, it's very quite simple. simple. Um, you've got these different tools that we'll go through here. But the first thing you want to do is go to Help here and then scroll all the way down here to Update. Go ahead and update your version and ensure that it's to the latest version. This will make sure that you have all the features that you need and then everything's up to date. You can find more features when you're in this area. You can go to Manage Update Sites and then you have all these choices here for different plugins and things that you can add depending on what you need. Um, but at the moment, we can go ahead and just use what we have right here, but I just want to make you aware. All you would need to do is check it and then click Add to My Site, and then you get other um, photo packages that you may need if you're going through the tutorials and they're using tools that you don't have. This is how you can add them to your site. Okay, so with ImageJ open, let's see what we're going to do in order to analyze a picture. So what you'll need to do is have some pictures, and I have some here. Um, that, that we're, we're using, using for a mineral accretion device project. project. So I'm going to navigate to those. Okay, so I have all these photos here that are all taken of the same coral on a nursery. So I'm just going to take one of those and you just drag and drop and you'll see that that says now drag and drop. And then we get this photo of this coral. So the first step that we're going to measure this coral, but the first thing that we need to do is to set the scale for the photograph so that we can know the scale, set the scale so that we can know the dimensions of this coral. So what we're going to do is utilize this ruler over here to set the number of pixels per centimeter in the photo. So I like to find a place to make a straight line. So you come over here, grab the straight line tool. I'm going to start at zero on the ruler, and I'm just going to draw down to four here. You could go to three or six, it doesn't really matter. So once I've drawn a line, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control M. So that measures the line. The other way we could do that is by going to Analyze and Measure here. So I'm given a length here. This length is in pixels, so what I want to do now is go ahead and go set scale. Now what it's going to do is it's going to automatically take that first measurement that I made here and put that into the distance here in pixels. And it's going to ask me do I know what that distance is. So I'm going to put 4 and the unit is centimeters, so 4 centimeters. Click OK. And then we can go ahead and now we're going to measure the coral. So I'm still using that same line tool. This is a branching coral, so I'm going to measure it in one axis throughout all the photographs. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to grab this at the end and I'm going to drag all the way over to the extreme point on the other end and release. Again, I hit Control M 
and I get the length this time in centimeters. So I know that this coral length here is 9.64 centimeters. So I could put that into my Excel file and then move on to the next coral. Now when I move, measure the next coral, I want to ensure that I measure along the same length. And I'm going to have to set the scale again. If we were in a microscope, then what we could do is when we go ahead and set our scale, we could check this global box and it would add that scale to all the photos that we had open. So if you're in a microscope, that's very easy because you're not changing the focal length or anything. However, taking underwater photographs, every photo is going to be different distance from the object. Um, and so we always need to set the scale again. So I'm going to go ahead and open a photo at a later date and show you how I would measure this same coral at a later date. So I'm going to drag and drop. Here. Okay, so I got my new coral up here. I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to clear the results just to make this more simple. You don't really have to do it every time, but just to, for clarity here. Okay, so now I've got that same coral, but it's grown a lot more. So sometimes people were wondering, should I, should I measure this length? This branch is a bit longer now. Should I measure it to here? But no, we want to measure the same axis. So the first thing we're going to do is zoom in a little bit using Control and Plus. All right, and now we want to set our scale again. So let's make sure that we recognize that zero on the ruler is not the edge this time. There's a different ruler. So we got to come in a little bit. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull that out. This time I'm doing it five centimeters. So I release, Control M. Got my distance in pixels here. I'm going to go to Analyze and Set Scale and set this to 5 centimeters. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out a little bit using Control minus. I'll use the space key to create a hand that I can then use to drag photograph. Now I go back to the line tool and I'm going to measure the same way we did last time from the extreme point over here to the extreme point here. Okay, so along the same axis as we had in the last photograph, release, control M, and then I'm given this coral length of 11.506 centimeters. So I could then put that in Excel with the date for this coral, and we would then be able to compare it to the last coral and know how much growth we've got. So this, so this is a great, great way, way to do it for branching corals, corals when you're looking, looking at branch extension rates, so how much did this coral extend. But, but in other corals, corals we're going to be looking at round corals. corals. So, so what we're going to want to know is how much did the radius or the diameter increase. So we're going to use some different tools. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that now. Okay, so that was how to measure the linear extension on branching corals. It's pretty straightforward because we're just measuring on one axis. But what if we have to measure the area of a coral, such as with irregular, with these irregularly shaped varieties of corals? So what I have here is a series of photographs taken on our mineral accretion device for this varieties coral. Um, and this is on a control unit that does not have electricity going to it. So I'm going to first select the first photograph here. And there we go. We can see this kind of irregularly shaped varieties. Um, we can't just draw like a circle around it or it won't be accurate. And we've got these dead areas in here that we don't want to include. So how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing that we need to do, just like last time, is to set our scale. So we're going to grab our straight line tool, and we're going to set it up here on the ruler, and we're going to pull out. This time I'm going to go 6 centimeters. Okay, so then we're going to go over, we're going to push Control M so that we get our measurement here. That's that line length in pixels. We go to Analyze, Set Scale, and we're going to set that to 6 centimeters. Okay, 
So, so now, now we've got, got the, sales, the scale set. set. The, next the next thing that we, we need to do is outline the coral. And, and we're going to outline just the living coral. coral. We're going to leave, leave off these dead bits and those that are covered in filamentous algae. algae. So, so I grabbed this, this freehand, freehand selection tool that allows me to basically drag and outline, outline the exact shape, shape of the coral. coral. So, so just take your time doing this. this. You want to ensure that, that you're just getting the living coral tissue and that you're not taking all these dead areas, the filamentous algae, or anything else like that. So I'm going to keep outlining this and just speed it up for you guys a little bit so you don't have to watch me go through this. Okay, okay, so, so now, now we've selected, selected our cork, gone around the whole thing, and come back, back to where we started. We can see that it selected that. If we were to just do clear outside, then we, we can, can see that we've got, got our, our little area of living coral, coral tissue um, there. there. And, and so, so now, now we're, we're going to go, go ahead and measure it. So, so we've got it selected, and now I'm going to hit Control and an M. And what, and what you, can you can see is, is unlike, unlike the coral, coral it, doesn't it doesn't show a length here, here but, but what, what it does show is an area. area. So, so I would I then take that area, area and I would put it into Excel. Now, now another, another thing, thing you might you have is over time, time the coral, coral may suffer partial mortality. So, so you, you might have multiple areas that are not connected. So let's see how we would do that. So I'm going to go ahead and close, close out, out of this, this. and I'm going to open up another photograph. photograph. Okay, okay, so what we see here, okay, so what we see here, we've got living coral tissue here, living coral tissue here, and here. But all this other area here on this particular coral is now dead. So how are we going to go about this one? So again, first we're going to have to set our scale. So I'm going to zoom in on that ruler a bit just to make things easier. And I'm going to select the line tool. I'm going to start here at 1 because it's easier to see that line. So I'm going to have to remember to subtract 1 wherever I get so I can see that 6 line in there pretty clearly. So I'm going to go 1 to 6, Control m to get that measurement. And then and when, when I, I go, go to set, set scale, scale, I'm going to remember that it's, it's only actually 5 centimeters. So, so put in 5 centimeters. centimeters. Okay, okay, now we're going to get to measuring that coral there. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And now we've got our coral here. So what we're going to do is use that freehand tool again. And we'll use it to outline the area of the smaller coral first. Okay, so now I've got that one area selected, but I also want to select all of this. So what I need to do, if I were just to start selecting, this would go away. And so what I need to do is hold down the Shift key. So I hold down Shift, and then I can add this selection to it. I can, I can also see, see there's a little bit of living coral, coral here and here. So I'm going to again hold down the shift key and I grab that one. Okay. So here is our selection. Looks good. We've got all that coral tissue. So now we go ahead and we hit Control M and we're going to get our measurement. Yeah, 43 centimeters squared. All right, so that's how we would do an irregularly shaped coral such as this one here. All right, great. And now the last one I want to go through is how do we measure the fossil up for a coral here? And so we're going to do this coral a lot like the parietes or the cephastria in a very, very similar, similar way. way. So, so let's, let's have, have a look. look. So, so again, again um, we, we would go ahead and first set our scale, scale like, like before. before. Okay. okay. 
And now, what we're going to do is we're going to outline the Parietes Coral as best we can using that same freeform tool. <clears throat> and and then, so, so we'll, we'll just, just go, go ahead, ahead and do that, that just like the varieties here. All right, All right, so, so now, now we've kind of outlined that coral. So, so what we, we have is kind of like a 2D representation, representation of a complex 3D area. area. Not, Not exactly, exactly perfect, perfect, but it's going to be our proxy for our extension. extension. So, so again, again, we can we go, go ahead and hit Control M, and, and we'll, we'll get the area in square centimeters of the kind of 2D representation of this coral. And so let's just take a quick look how we do that once that coral gets much larger. All right, All right, so, so we, we would set, set the scale, scale in the same way. way. And then and we're going to go ahead and try to figure out how are we going to get this variety. Now that we've got all this other varieties in here as well, we're going to have to try to determine the boundaries. So it's going to be pretty difficult. The other issue that we have is these blank spaces within. And so we're going to go ahead and just pretend that they're not there and measure, measure this, this as, as if it was a parietes or a cephastria. And so we're going to outline just the outer perimeter of the coral. And so let's see how we're going to do that. We have to make sure that we can differentiate between the coral that we want, the one that we started with, and these other neighboring corals that have started to grow in together. So let's go ahead and use our freehand tool to go ahead and start doing this, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so now what I did here is I accidentally forgot this. And unfortunately, I have not figured out a way to delete just part of the line. So unfortunately, what I have to do is go here to Edit, Selection, and then I go to Select None. And I lose everything I've done, and I have to start all over again. So try to make a plan ahead of time, and maybe do those really complex areas first, which is what I'll do this time. Go ahead and start here. Phew. Okay. okay. So, so now we have, have outlined, outlined the entire coral colony. colony. So, so we, we can, can go, go ahead again and hit Control M and get our size. size. So, that's so that's how, how we're going to do all the coral types. types. Um, we're we're going to just try with these ones really to just kind of get the outline of the coral. And I know we're missing some spots here that are non-coral, but as long, as long as we do it, do it the same, same way, way for every, every coral, coral, we should, should get, get a good proxy for growth. growth. So that, so that is, is how we measure corals um, using ImageJ and, and to monitor and track the increase, the increase in their size or their growth rates. rates. And, and so, so we, we do, do that, that with many of the corals, corals like we saw with the Parietes, Sebastria, and Apostolopora, by outlining the coral and getting the internal area of that outline type of 2D, 2D representation, representation of a complex 3D surface. surface. So, so it's, it's not, not going to give us a very accurate um, as far as the full size, but we can, if we do it all the measurements in the same way, get a fairly good idea of how much that coral has grown as a sort of proxy. We also can use this in a straight line to measure branch extension as we saw in the aquacora corals. So I hope this video has been helpful for you, and please let us know if you do anything different. If you have any tricks or tips to, to make this easier or more accurate, please let us know. So thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time with Conservation Diving.